I hope, hope this finds you well today, as always. And thank you for joining me, whoever it is, all 22 people who watch this. <laughs> but hey, it's like a digital home group, right? That's the kind of way I look at it. I'm just kidding. Hopefully it's 22 million, you know. Anyways, I'm just kidding. Having fun today, but... Alert! Alert! I have an alert today. Alright, and what is that alert? The alert is... Um, don't let the bumps in the road flow off, get you off your flow. Okay, that's really the key to today's alert is... Um, you're gonna have hiccups, okay, uh, in life. Uh, you're in a fallen world, you're dealing with broken people, you're dealing with people who are on different levels of the climb, okay? And it's not always the devil, alright? Uh, most of this, most of this, if you, you know, you know me and you've watched our material, is that um, um, what you have is a situation where the flesh gets in the way. So, God is working on the whole flesh. That's called sanctification. We're working out our salvation with fear and trembling, right? Because the flesh is a nasty, nasty thing and it needs to be down. So that's why you have to be alert of when, when things that may be going awry or, or seem to be, um, you know, causing things, uh, circumstances, you can't let it make you stop or procrastinate or keep you off your game. You gotta stay in your lane and keep climbing. That's what I say often. Because um, what you're gonna find a lot of times is these circumstances create opportunities for you to work on your response mechanism. See, the one thing God can't take from us is our free will. He won't do it. He gave that to us and he'll never invade it. He's a gentleman. So, but what he'll do is he'll, you know, hey, he uses everything for his glory and his good. That's why it all works together. So you, when, what you're on the alert for is when they happen and what is it causing you to do? What's your response to it? Because your response will cut off the flow or keep you in the flow, all right? Not the circumstance. You can't blame the circumstance. It's you, it's me, it's me too. Just so you know when I say you, it's me. I'm in that. So our response is everything, why? Because righteousness is a kingdom trait, you know, because the Romans says, uh, for the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And righteousness is really a choice to, of right living. Christ gave us the ability to live perfectly like he did, okay? We, as a matter of fact, we're supposed to be perfect, perfect in love, which is the perfect life. If you love perfectly, man, you got, you're living the perfect life. Um, but righteousness is a kingdom trait. And so these, these bumps or circumstances allow you to respond with righteousness. And so what does that do? Bam! It puts you in the kingdom way. So the Spirit can now move in because you're responding to the Holy Spirit's leading in righteousness and He's bringing that forth. And it's righteousness, what? Peace and joy. Okay? And we've talked about peace in the past. That's irene. That is freedom from the havoc of, and chaos of the war around you. And so you want that. So uh, it's going to take laser focus. And our example here is um, Jesus, right? So we've got two things here I want to talk about where he was so in tune and laser focused on his father's will. He said, me and my father won. You know, I, and I don't do anything apart from the father. And in John, I'm going to read this to you, John 7, 8. Here's a circumstance where he says, you must go up to the feast. I am not going to this feast because my appointed time has not been completed. And having said these things, he was staying in Galilee. That was verses 7, or I'm sorry, 8 and 9. Now, verse 10, <laughs> one verse later, it says, And as his brothers went up to the feast, he also went up, not openly, but in secret. So what happened there? Well, I don't know fully, but my guess is this. Something happened between, he's not a liar. Right? He's not going to lie to them and say, okay, I'm going to tell you one thing and then do another because I just can't let you in. Because he would have lied. It's a lie. I'm not going to go. My time hasn't come. But then he goes. So we know he's not a liar. So what happened? Plans changed. My time has not come. Well, something happened. Dad said your time's not come. So go. One verse. And same thing with the water and the wine. My time has not come. Mary said, they're out of wine. My time's not come. Do whatever he says to do. And he turns and he says, go get the cistern. So what happens? He's so in tune and so focused that he does not allow the distractions and the bumps and all the things around him to deter him 
from being focused on his father's business. And neither should we. And that's how we're going to do it. And that's how we're going to get through this. Respond the right way, righteousness, and the kingdom will invade. So you got to just stay alert. Stay alert and do this. And here's today's verse. Isaiah 58, 11. Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you continually. Remember, you got to stay focused on him. He'll guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Your life will be an attractive watered garden if you do this right and you stay on alert. And why? So you can be love, light, salt, and truth to everybody around you and express who the Father is in his fullness through your life. It's cool stuff, man. We got the best gig on the planet. So as always, keep climbing, stay in your lane, and stay in love. And we'll see you for tomorrow's brew. Awesome. Have a great day. Bye. You've just watched the Morning Brew Daily Devotion with David Cross. For a more in-depth study on this and other transformation discipleship topics with a prophetic perspective, visit our website at www.mountainguideministries.com.